So this video is an introduction to a program I've written called Table Explorer that's designed for a quick data analysis and visualization of tabular data. So the layout's very straightforward. On the left side, you see a table uh, area with the toolbar. On the right is the plot window with the uh, plot options. And we have our toolbar at the top. Um, and we can just simply generate new sheets, which correspond to new uh, areas of data for just like we can the spreadsheet um, and we can use this data sets menu to generate some sample data here so this is uh, just a set of random numbers with uh, a label column and we can zoom in and out of the table we can change the column widths and we can reorder columns by dragging them dragging the column header and we can select data by just dragging and clicking like a regular spreadsheet. And whatever we drag, uh, we can plot by pressing the plot button here in the tool toolbar and the plot area updates on the right side. And then on the very right side there, we can change the plot options. Say we want to change, um, we want to add a, a title. We want to um, change the line width. And then we replot whenever we, we make our changes. Um, say we want to change it to a bar plot, for example. We can also change it so that we plot instead of a single layout, we have a, a multiple plot for each uh, data series. Um, and uh, replotting with, uh, whenever we change our selection is very straightforward. We just reselect whatever we want and then replot again. And uh, so it's very quick to, to change the view uh, every time we change our selections. So there's a couple of other things uh, I can show with, uh, in regards to table functionality. We can, um, if we right click on the column, it shows us a pop-up menu uh, that uses, it's used to apply functions uh, on a per column basis. So I can sort the table by individual columns like this. Uh, I can um, apply a function to the uh, column. So if I, I choose this menu, these are mathematical functions I can apply. So let's say, exponential here that creates a new uh, column with the result next to the original that's labeled with the function name or any name I want so for example let's say I wanted to plot them as a scatter plot I could just do that I can copy uh, and paste by using the toolbar uh, buttons here uh, this will copy this current selection and I can then paste into another table um, I can view uh, the table as text. I go back here, press this button on the toolbar menu. And we can also view information about our table here, which just shows us the, the data types of each column and how much memory it's using. Uh, but rather than um, go through all the, the functionality, uh, which is trivial examples, I thought it would be useful to use real world data uh, to show a bit more uh, uh, sophisticated examples so if we I thought a good example would be uh, this Ireland's COVID-19 testing data which is provided on this website by the Department of Health um, and what this is is a, a website that contains all these dashboards representing their data so pretty convenient to use but say we want to look at the data ourselves in, in a bit more detail or maybe in a way that isn't shown here uh, if we what we can do is just import some of the tables into this program uh, and manipulate them from there. So we can do this by going to the data and services uh, menu in this website, which brings up a, a set of tables that they provide uh, uh, as part of their REST service. And uh, the meaning of each table is explained here in the summaries. Um, but the, one of the ones I want to look at first is this one, which is uh, cumulative, cumulative number of specimens tested in, in Irish labs. So if I click on this, it'll bring, bring me to the page for this table. And uh, there's a download link um, here. So we want to download, it, it says spreadsheet format, but it's actually a CSV file, CSV format. So if I copy the link address here, and then I go back to my uh, program. I'm going to make a new 
project. Um, so we just close this one. Sorry, won't save it. And then um, we we're going to use import URL. So this is going to import from a web address. So I'm going to remove that, paste it in. I think I had it already. And I'm going to say OK. And now the table has been directly imported uh, into our into our program. So the first thing we want to do is to just take a look at the what this table is. Now we look at the information for the table. These are uh, the 11 columns that are in the table. And you can see that they represent um, positives and test results and a date. So every row is, corresponds to a single a data for a single day. Um, so we want to first of all format this date column as a proper date object or date data type. And we can just do that by right clicking on it and selecting date time conversion. And it'll it'll guess by the uh, what's in the column. Um, it'll infer the, the format and you can see it hasn't really changed much but if you go back to the information we see that now this D type is date time so that's what we want and this will make it easier uh, for plotting and uh, analyzing time series data to convert it into this format so we've 288 rows we have uh, the date starting on the 18th of March and ending up at the the 30th of the 12th and uh, if we just expand the uh, window here take a better look at the table we can see the positive means if you actually look at the values it's actually a cumulative sum of positives and these uh, columns with numbers after them test 24 and test 7 are test results 24 is uh, test per day and 7 is test per week and the same with the positives although there's no pos 24 here I notice and um, so in fact if we want to um create this uh pos24 value uh what we can do is do an uh, apply a function to the positive uh column and this column is since it's a cumulative value we can actually um calculate the positive uh values per day by applying a function that subtracts each successive row from the previous one and we apply a function by right clicking on the, the column. We select apply function. And uh, we select the diff. And that the diff function, you'll see what it does when we run it. So now we have a new column here called diff positive. And what it does is it subtracts uh, this column from this one to get this value, which is 70. Then this, sorry, this row, this row, uh, subtract uh, this row from this one to get uh, this value and so on so instead of having a cumulative value we have a uh, a value that is essentially the if you like differential between each uh, each value in this column we're going to rename this column actually so if i say rename and we call it pause 24 so let's have a look at uh Let's drag this over here and have a look at it. Let's select these two columns and plot them. So this plot is, the default is, is just a line plot of uh, treating each column as a data series. So in fact, you can see it's, it's taking the date as a series, but what we want is to plot these values against the date. So we want the date to be the x-axis here. So we simply switch off uh, use index here. And what that does is it sets the first column, the selection, to be the x-axis by default in these plots. So when we replot, now we see the date uh, <coughs> column is at the bottom, and now this tracks the number of positives. So this is a um, the changing value for the number of positive tests carried out every day, or test results. And um, we can format the date uh, uh, in the plot the date uh, axis as well, if we want to make it look a bit better, by going to the axis uh, tab here in the plot options and choosing date. And when we replot, it's formatted. 
uh, it's maybe slightly easier to read. Now if you look further across the table, there's a column called P rate. I assume this means positive rate, which I would take to be the um, number of positives divided by the number of tests every day. Although I'm not sure how this has been calculated. But we can calculate this value ourselves by selecting the these POS24 and TEST24 columns and right clicking on the column header, uh, sorry, and saying apply function. And if we say choose the divide function, it'll divide the first by the second column selected and produce a new column, which I'm going to rename to rate. This is the fraction of total tests that are positive every day. And now if I select these and plot them, we get a different plot that isn't ex very clear because every uh, each of these three, although they're plotted against the same date, uh, these three columns all have different scales. Now we can represent these, uh, plot these in different, a couple of different ways. We can plot them in different subplots, which go to uh, the plot options and choose multiple axis layouts or axis layout multiple. That'll now plot them in, um, in three different subplots. We can actually set the number of rows here to change the number of rows and columns. It might make it easier to read. So it's slightly easier to read now. And we can see that the positive rate, obviously, at the bottom is going up uh, when the positives, number of positives as a percentage uh, of the total tests done is, um, is increasing. And uh, there's another way to display these plots, which is called a twin axis layout, um, um, which I can show you here. Now, I'm going to have to make the window, the plot window, a bit bigger. But basically, that uh, puts each uh, data series on its own uh, y axis, its own y axis scale. So the first. Uh, uh, Pos24 uh, is um, is the the orange color here. Its its scale here, its y scale here is on the the left, and the other two are shown on the right, so that they can be compared in the same uh, in the same plot, even though they're the scale of the data is different. And you can see how closely the rate uh, is following uh, the actual positives in this case. Another feature of the program is um, if we want to store plots we've made um, and put them in kind of a scratch pad for later use, or we can, if we say we want to save them later as we go, we can go to plots and say store plot. Uh, and that will bring up, uh, it'll be stored in, in, a, in a, a, like a scratch pad, as I said, called a plot gallery. We can bring this up. So that plot's there and it'll be kept there. So when I change the plot uh, later, uh, we can go back and see it if we want to save it. So say I go back to the multiple subplots here and also say store plot. We go to the gallery here. Both of these plots are now saved. Now, so we want to take a closer look at the relationship between the positives and tests numbers. All we have to do is select those two columns and plot them together. But we want to choose a scatter plot and a single plot. And I'm going to change the format here back to auto of the x-axis so we get the correct numbers. So we've now the tests on the x-axis and positives on y. So you see there's some kind of linear relationship in parts of the plot, um, although it is quite scattered. But we can't tell with this plot how um, it relates to time because we don't know which points uh, correspond to which rows or which dates. So we can address that problem, the plot, by coloring the uh, points according to their uh, date. And we can't use the date column directly for this, so we're going to have to generate an integer value from the column, from the date. So we use date time conversion, and we extract the, let's say, the week of the year from the date. That produces a new column, week of year, which is an integer value that represents the week corresponding to that date. So if we drag it to... Um, to the right side here. Uh, for some reason, we've lost this column. It's moved. I think it's a bug. I move it back here. 
I select those three columns now and it's and we you go down here to the color by value uh, drop down and we choose week of year and now I plot again we can see the plots now colored by uh, by the week so the blue and green represent the later time points or the later dates and the red and yellow are the earlier ones and we can verify that by also choosing um, to use the week of year as point the point labels if we plot again we can see the number next to each point represents its uh, week of year value so those are the later times Let's switch that off again and this plot then shows that there's a relationship roughly in some parts of the plot linear between the uh, tests carried out and the numbers of positives um, and we can do the same with the rate if I drag the rate in uh, to in place of the pos24 value and select those columns again and now plot it's a very similar relationship in fact I can maybe just choose the latter half of the plot and see what we see what it looks like so a uh, slightly more um, uh, uh, slightly less obviously linear but it might actually be instructive also to use the positive uh, seven day values which are I think they're the sum over seven days uh, instead of the 24 hour the daily values so I'm going to drag them out as well here and then select those three again and now we see a very similar structure but a, uh, in a way clearer because the values here uh, uh, represent you could say well they're some they're not averages but they're smoothed out over a week so we can see much more clearly how the relationship between the variables tracks through time so you can see a much more clearly linear value uh, relationship here at these later time points between uh, tests and positives so another table we can look at is this one the COVID statistics profile a HBSC op Ireland open data very long names they have and this one is um, uh, contains data on um, hospital admissions and uh, deaths related to COVID so we're going to do the same as we did before we can choose import URL and I've already tried this one so I think this is the address here so this is uh, has a lot more columns we can have a look at the columns here there's a date there's an x and y value which are geolocations there's a lot of other columns that are breakdowns by age or gender and then there's these ones here which are the ones we're going to have a look at um, that are confirmed deaths uh, cases confirmed and ICU COVID cases so we want to extract those columns uh, actually from the table and uh, put them into a, another one to make it easier for ourselves so all we do with this small fairly small number of columns is take um, this is the confirmed COVID cases this is a cumulative number we don't need that one this is confirmed deaths and then this is um, appears to be hospitalized and then I need to see these columns more clearly I have to resize them this is requiring ICU so if I drag these together and just select them all and copy and then I create a new table and paste into this new table this just gives uh, uh, something that's easier to work with and I can do the same thing as I did before I can convert the date to a date time value I can quickly then um, plot all these values just to get a look at them so let's just plot a line plot and let's pl put them in um, in multiple plots subplots so on their own so uh, sorry I've included the I want to plot them against the date so remove the use index so now you can see it takes a little bit of tweaking so this uh, shows you that the hospital values and the the ICU values here are cumulative and the um, 
the other two are 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 per da are daily uh, values. So we can convert our lower columns here into cumulative values by doing as we did before and applying a diff function to both of them. I'm going to update in place this time so it overwrites the values in the in the column. So you have to be careful with that. And now when I replot, you can see at the bottom ones, they're now fluctuating on a daily basis. Now, if we wanted to do as we did before and look at the correlation between these metrics and the cases, we could do that by, again, plotting a, a scatter plot, a multiple axis scatter plot. So now we have the first column is, it's ignoring the date, in fact, here. The first column is the cases. And so that's taken as the x-axis. And, and then there's a plot for each of the, the other columns. And, but we have to be careful with this because it's different than before in that there's a lag between case numbers and on an individual basis, say hospital admissions or deaths of seven to 10, seven to 14, or maybe more days. So it's a bit more complex. So I'm going to put that aside for now, given the fact also that these uh, some of these numbers are very low, so it'll be always hard to see a correlation anyway. And I'm going to go back to our previous line plot. And if you look at these values, they're quite noisy. So let's have a look at how to smooth them out. So if you take the first uh, case of the confirmed cases, um, we can apply a, basically resample the column by applying a rolling mean. Or rolling window. So if I take, if I choose in this dialog a mean value and choose a window of seven, what that go, what that is going to do is to for e it'll for every row it'll take the value and it'll take the surrounding other seven rows and it'll find the mean value and it'll substitute that for each row. So that's going to also update in place. And now when I replot, if you keep an eye on the top subplot here you'll see now it's smoothed out it's a smoothed out version of that uh, noisy curve and i can do it also for the the second uh, column the confirm deaths and then when i replot let's have a look okay that's smoother now i want to this is the last thing I want to do is to include the testing values inside this plot. But we don't have them in this table because they come from our previous testing table. We looked at this test seven value. So what we're going to do is to merge the two tables on their common, a common row. And the common row here is obviously the date. So to do that, we just go back to our previous table and copy the first two columns, the date and the test value. And then we can open up a new subtable below the main one in our current table, our current sheet, and paste in that other table here. So we have two tables now. This is the, the one with the test values, and we're going to merge them. Now, uh, merging on date can be a bit tricky. So instead, I'm going to extract, first of all, I'm going to convert this to make sure it's a date time, and I'm going to extract the day of the year, and we're going to merge on that instead because that, that'll just be a, a, an integer. So I'll do it for both tables, I extract the day of the year. And then we go to the toolbar and choose the merge button here. And it opens a new dialog. And we can see we have two sets of, two lists of columns from both tables. So the left corresponds to the upper table here. So we choose day of year from both, which we know should uniquely, more or less uniquely match between the two. So there shouldn't be any uh, complications. So when I press apply now, it'll show us the new table that has columns from both. So you see the test at the end. Um, so we're going to uh, use this now to plot against these others. So I'm going to, I can um, copy this to the clipboard, but I'm going to make a new sheet from this data and call it this table and call it merged and close this dialog. So this is our new table. So now all we have to do is drag the test values up here, 
put that down there and then select our date and our first three columns plot them and then we have to change our settings again let's change it to twin axes so now that's what we get I'm going to copy that to the store that plot and open our plot gallery as we had before so those are our previous plots and this is our current one so that's what we end up with we have these three metrics plotted together on a, a common axis uh, a common uh, sorry common plot with with different uh, y scales so i'm going to end those examples there so this was just a brief overview of what this program can do it's still in development um, i'd encourage anyone who's interested in exploring data themselves but doesn't have much experience in um, uh, data analysis or coding that some fairly sophisticated uh, analysis can be done in this program and it's still at an early stage. Some of the features uh, need to be enhanced and new features added. Um, it's available freely. You can go to the GitHub page. I'll leave the links in the description below. Uh, it can be installed if you have Linux or OS X or even on Windows, you can install it with this program PIP. But there's also a, um, a link on the homepage here to an installer, a binary installer, if you use Windows, uh, which should be straightforward to use. So uh, let's hope it's helpful. Thank you.